In a previous video, we've started our unit, unit test structure, and we have started a prototype or a stub for a specimen DTO. In this video, we're going to continue with our test framework. We're going to write a few more tests. I'm going to say uh, public void test invalid specimen throws exception on save. So what does that mean? Well, with behavior-driven design, we usually want our test methods to be very descriptive on what they're testing. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to create just a basically an empty uh, specimen DTO, and we're going to try and save it and verify that we get an exception. So I'm going to say given specimen is not initialized, Okay, and that's a method that I haven't yet created. When specimen is saved, we get to reuse that method from an earlier test. Then verify exception. Now the funny thing is, given specimen is not initialized, I'll go ahead and alt enter and create that method. We could simply leave that method empty uh, because all we're saying is that the, oh, there we go, all we're saying here is that the uh, specimen DTO either has not been initialized or we have uh, not put a plant GUID in there. If we get to our specimen DAO stub, if we have a, a, a specimen that has not been initialized to a variable, to an object rather, an object hasn't been placed in the variable, this method call will return a null pointer exception, which is a subclass of exception. Uh, and that will validate that, hey, I can't save something that's null. So we can leave it blank or we can populate it. Either way is fine. Um, I will go ahead and say specimen DTO equals new specimen DTO. I'll go ahead and just initialize it so we don't test for the null point or exception. Then verify exception, alt enter, create method, then verify exception. Uh, I simply want to put in an assert false here. Whoops. Assert false. Specimen has saved. So we want to verify that a specimen that is empty has not saved. So assert false will assert that this variable is false. And it should be false because we should catch the exception on when specimen has saved. I will save this and then I'll go ahead and run and we'll make sure that we get our test passing. Sure enough, when we look at the results, test passed, both of our tests have passed. Okay, a couple more tests, a couple more things we want to test. On the specimen DAO, uh, we want to test that if we search on Redbud, uh, we get back Redbud, we do not get back Pawpaw. So uh, we want to test the search method here, and we have not yet stubbed that out, uh, but we will do that next. Okay, so I go back to my test. And I'm going to make a new test method. We're going to say private, or we'll say public void. Uh, we'll put it, sorry, we'll put it up here. Give myself a little more space. Public void test redbud search returns redbud. Okay. And I'm going to say given search term initialized to redbud then conduct search uh, sorry when when searched then verify redbud returned okay all methods i haven't yet created given search term initialized to redbud okay well this is easy search term equals redbud okay search term it's red because i'm assigning a value to a variable i have not yet created alt enter and create field a field means it's going to be accessible in all of our methods within this class when searched alt enter create method when searched okay for this one we're going to say specimen dao dot search Okay, and we're going to pass in our search term. Okay, and uh, I put my cursor over the method search. Control-Alt-F will assign these results to a field. 
Um, we'll say plant DTOs, that's fine. Okay, let's just verify that it created the field and it did. Okay. Uh, then verify redbud return. Alt enter. Create method, then verify redbud return. Um, in theory, you have something like, like oak. Oak could be an oak tree or an oak leaf hydrangea. So some of the common names can have multiple genus and species. Um, in this case, as long as we get one redbud returned, we're going to call that success. So I go to my then verify redbud returned. I'm going to make a new Boolean variable. We're going to say redbud Boolean redbud returned equals false. Let's assume it's false until we can prove it's true. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say control J and then I'm going to type iter. This is a shortcut that will create a for each loop for us and it will iterate over each item in a collection. In this case it knows that the most locally scoped collection is the one called plant DTOs. Okay, that looks fine to me. Yep, all looks good. So I'm going to say plant DTO can, uh, get common contains and then we'll say redbud. Okay, uh, we'll make this an if test. If plant DTO get common contains redbud, uh, then we're going to say redbud returned equals true and then break out of the loop. No need to keep going. All we need is one red bud to satisfy this test. Contains just says, does the common name contain the word red bud? Now, red buds are of the genus Circus. We could also write this test to say plant DTO get genus contains Circus. That would be a nice test to write. Um, we might make a then verify Circus returned method or something like that. But for simplicity, let's keep it like this for the moment and we choose save. Now, let's reuse a lot of what we've done. Uh, let's see, then verify redbud returned. Oh, I need, I need, uh, I need to, uh, sorry, I need to still do an assert. So let's say at the end of this, let's say assert true, redbud returned. Okay, there's my assert. Okay, and the assert is what makes it a test. Now, let's reuse some of this, and let's verify that a pawpaw is not returned. Okay, so let's make a new method. Public void test redbud search does not return pawpaw. I can assure you, these are two of my favorite trees, by the way. I can assure you there is nothing in any definition of a pawpaw that contains the word redbud. The genus, species, the cultivar, the common name... There's nothing that contains redbud. So it's safe to say if we search on redbud, we should not get a pawpaw in return. Here's where we see the value of given when then. I can reuse the given and the when. All I need to change is the then. So given search term is initialized to redbud. When searched, then verify Paul Paul not returned. And that's the only new method I need. Okay, alt enter, create method. Okay, then verify a Paul Paul not returned. I'm going to grab a lot of this logic above uh, from then verify redbud return. And I'm just going to flip flop things around. We're going to change the Boolean variable to Paul Paul returned. And since we're verifying that the Paul Paul was not returned, let's assume it's, let's assume. Um, we can keep it at false. That's fine. Uh, I'm going. I'm going to change the uh, variable universally. So Paul Paul returned, and Paul Paul returned. Okay. Um, if plain TTO get common contains Paul Paul. I'm sorry. Contains red butt. Yeah. Then Paul Paul. Well, no. I'm sorry. Contains Paul Paul. We didn't just say Paul to be honest with you, but Paul Paul will stick at that. Uh, Paul Paul returned equals true and break. Okay, one more thing we want to do. We want to verify that a Paul Paul was not returned. So we're going to change this assert true to assert false. Okay. In other words, we want to assume that one was not returned. 
we want to check every one of them to see if we did get a pawpaw in return. And uh, if we did get a pawpaw in return, then our test should fail. So if this is true, our test should fail. We want to assert it to false, which means we're verifying that it is false, it is not true. Okay, one more thing. In this case, we want to check every one of them. Well, actually not really. No, that's okay. As long as we get one pawpaw, um, then, we know our then we know our test should fail. So we can go ahead and leave that break. I think we're good here. And I save. Okay, now we do need to finish up our stub here, and we need to actually have this do something. So what I'm going to do, remember a stub is just a prototype. A stub is just, okay, here's what I want my program to do. I don't know the details of how to parse JSON right now. I don't know the details of how to um, how to access the internet or anything like that. But I know enough to hard code a little bit of Java uh, to give a prototype of what I want. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to say array list plant DTO. Actually, that can just be a list. List plant DTO all plants equals new array list plant DTO. Okay. Uh, okay, and alt enter. Okay, uh, now we're going to say if search term dot contains redbud. Okay, we're going to say plant DTO plant equals new plant DTO. Okay, plant dot set GUID. I think for a red bud, the GUID is 83 or so, but it doesn't really matter. This is just dummy data. Plant.setGenus, Circus, Plant.setSpecies, Canadensis, Plant.setCommon, Eastern red bud and i will tell you if you live in the midwest as i do uh red bud is probably one of the best trees you can put in your yard it has edible flowers and it creates its own nitrogen it's a legume uh beautiful pink purple flowers in the uh in the mid spring okay uh now we want to add some specimens to this although i guess we don't really have to but we might as well so let's say specimen dto specimen equals whoops, equals new specimen, DTO, okay, specimen, dot set latitude, uh, and we'll use a Cincinnati latitude about 84.57, and specimen, whoops, specimen, dot set longitude, and again we'll use uh, roughly a Cincinnati longitude uh, 39.47. Okay. And uh, then we'll say specimen dot set location. Okay. We'll say Cincinnati naturally. And then we're going to say uh, list specimen DTO all specimens equals new specimen DTO. Uh, sorry, new array list specimen DTO all specimens dot add okay and specimen okay and now we're gonna say uh, well let me put some comments here create a mock-up plant create a specimen to associate with that plant. Naturally, we could make multiple specimens, but for the sake of brevity, I'm just going to keep it as this uh, one specimen. Okay, add the specimen to the plant. Okay, uh, plant dot set specimens and all specimens. And there we go. Add the specimen collection to the plant. Okay. And then finally, 
return the collection of plants and specimens. And again, this is a mock-up, but uh, you see that this helps us think how we're going to organize when we actually do talk to an online data source or a local data source. This helps us think about a plant is going to have specimens. If I search on Redbud, I should return a Redbud. Return all plants. Okay, and save. With that now, we've satisfied our mock-up search, and we should have satisfied our test. Uh, we are just verifying here. Um, we have our given search term initialized to specimen uh, to Redbud. Okay, there's our Redbud search term. Okay, uh, when searched, that's the same for both of our new test methods. So when searched, uh, specimen DAO search on Redbud, that search term, return. Uh, store the return value in this uh, variable called plant ETOs. Okay, then verify Redbud returned, and then verify Paul Paul not returned. So uh, then verify Redbud returned. We want to see if the common name contains Redbud. It's actually going to be Eastern Redbud, but that contains Redbud. Redbud returned true. Assert true. Okay. Verify that it can or see if we have anything that contains Paul Paul. Paul Paul return true and break, but we're ass assuming that a Paul Paul will not be returned. So we're assuming that the Paul Paul return is still going to be false. That looks good to me. Let me go ahead and run it and let's see the results. When I ran the test, it failed. And that's good. It's told me that my program is broken. It failed on the then verify red bud return. I did some debugging and found that plant DTOs was empty. I went back and looked at my stub. And sure enough, it caught an error that I have. Uh, I have created the plant, and I've created the specimen, and I'm returning the collection all plants. What I'm missing, though, is I never added the plant to that collection all plants. So I need to say all plants dot add, and then pass in the plant, terminate with a semicolon, and then we'll try this test again. But at this point, I'm going to call the test a success because it caught a logic error. Now. The important thing is, because we're testing against a known data source here, a hard-coded data source, this test is now ready, or will be ready as soon as we prove it out. This test will be ready to test our live data source once we use that, our actual data. Uh, so in future videos, we're going to take this stub, specimen DAO stub, and we're going to change it out to an actual implementation. and when we're ready to run the test against that actual implementation, it's quite simple. Because we used an interface, all we need to do is change this line right here to swap out the stub to the interface. And that's the value of interfaces in Java. An interface means, uh, an interface means that any class that implements the interface can be the object type. Think about polymorphism. Polymorphism. The variable type which you see here, tells you what methods you're allowed to call. The object type tells you what will happen when you call those methods. The variable type is an interface. An interface is simply a list of methods. And that's all a variable type needs to be is a list of methods. It doesn't need to have any definition of what those methods are. It just needs to be that list of methods. The variable type in this case is a stub, but when we write our actual implementation, all we need to do is swap this one line out of our unit test, and we can continue to run the unit test against that implementation. Now, some good news. Take a look. After making that fix, uh, sure enough, our tests have run and our tests have passed. All looks good. Uh, so I think we are okay to go ahead and commit this. Uh, this is my most recent. These are from my previous runs. This is my most recent run at 136. You see uh, the tests have passed. So in our next video, uh, we're going to start making the actual implementation of this stub. And then in a future video, we'll swap that implementation with this stub and run this test all over again. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.